It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. Well, look at you, Blaine. You don't know Jack PlayStation all by yourself. Oh, well, I should be honored. I mean, you could be playing with Laura Croft, right? Just so you know, if I seem insensitive to your lonely needs, don't take it personally. I'm just a voice in your TV. You do know that, don't you? One. Coming at you. Only the Brat Pack understands my angst. Let's see what you'll do for a thousand bucks. Oh, this one takes me back all right. The teen angst episode. Yep, who doesn't get nostalgic for all the different clicks from the teen years and how you never seem to belong to any of them? Ah, sweet youth. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. If you order a breakfast club sandwich, which of these will not come with your meal? A creamy jock, a tossed popular girl, a french fried exchange student, or a side of nerd? There was no exchange student in the breakfast club. Mmm, breakfast club sandwich. I like mine toasted over a St. Elmo's fire. Two. Up next, Teenage Wasteland. I got $2,000, says you don't know this one. Yep, there's nothing like a John Hughes movie to make me want to run out and rent a tuxedo and go to prom. You know the feeling, right? You've got everything you need except, hey, wait a minute. Where's that thing you're supposed to wear around your waist? Oh, no, you need one of those things. It looks like a flattened snake that ate a rat. You know what I mean? One of those things. What the hell is that thing called? Cumberbund, cummerbund, cummerdun, or vest? Cummerbund. It's from a Persian word meaning hide your gut. Although some guys slide it down a little lower to hide their adolescent enthusiasm on the dance floor. Three. Here's a little something I call damp popularity. And this one's going to be worth $2,000. Forward March. Imagine peer pressure affects you the same way air pressure affects the weather. If your friends start giving you lower amounts of pressure, how would you most likely react? You would burst into tears, you would hyperventilate, you would get the chills, or you would be able to live your own life? You know, everyone else gives the right answer. I don't know what makes you think you're better than everybody else. Uh, does this ring a bell? Low air pressure always precedes some kind of precipitation or rainstorm, just as high peer pressure always precedes your friends making you run naked across the football field. <laughs> or maybe that was just me. Oh. The category is Backstreet Noise, and this one's worth $3,000. See what you can do with this one. When pop singing stars the Backstreet Boys become Backstreet Men, how will their vocal ranges most likely shift? From bass to alto, from falsetto to soprano, from soprano to tenor, or from bad to worse? Soprano is the highest natural range for women and boys, while tenor is the highest natural range for men. Unless, of course, you kick them in the boys. Five. This category is Hope I Die Before I Get Acne. You get it right, I'm putting you up $2,000. Hey, do you remember that classic Who lyric, It's Only Teenage Wasteland, right? Well, good for you. If the author of the literary classic The Wasteland were a tortured teen, which of these scenes might have inspired the poem? T.S. Eliot getting a swirly, John Steinbeck being locked in his locker, James Joyce getting tripped in the hallway, or Ernest Hemingway receiving a wedgie? No, that incident inspired Hemingway to write the seafaring literary classic The Old Man and the Wedgie. The correct answer is... The epic poem The Wasteland was written by T.S. Eliot. Looks like the other kids also figured out that his name's an anagram for toilets. Well, open your eyes. Looks like we're about to enjoy a When Did Happen. Okay, now I'm going to show you an event like this. Then I'm going to give you seven other events like this one. For each one, you got to tell me if it happened before man first walked on the moon, after the moonwalk, or if it never happened at all. Buzz in when the correct answer is lit, you get a thousand bucks. But of course, if you're wrong, I'll take a thousand every time you're wrong. You're all set? Okay. 
This when did happen is called dirty soap. So, speaking of wastelands inhabited by angst-ridden whiners, I'm sure everybody remembers when this special TV moment first aired. The Real World London. Now, did this Real World segment appear before the London cast, after it, or did this Real World installment never appear at all? Okay, let's check it out. Well, you didn't screw up completely. Let's take a look at your overall score. Okay, now, where were we? Seven. Category's gonna be Smells Like Hole. You get this one, you pocket 2,000 bucks. Get the wax out of your ears, it's question time. If Kurt Cobain had penned the tortured lines to Smells Like Easy Spirit, what smelly item of Courtney's might have inspired the song? Her perfume, her shoes, her lingerie, or her deodorant? Shouldn't have done that. Okay, now here's a good answer. Easy Spirit is a brand of women's pumps, apparently fantastic to play basketball in. And have you seen Courtney lately? Smells like expensive designer makeover. Eight. I'm calling this one. Where do I put my hands? You get it right, you get 2K. Ready? Catch this. Because it has the strongest gravitational pull, on which planet would frisky teens engage in the heaviest petting? Pluto, Jupiter, Earth, or Mercury? Jupiter's gravity is the strongest of all the planets. Yeah, I can just hear it now. Thousands of teens yelling, I've gone down and I can't get up. Nine. This one's called Angst-Ridden Youth and Algebraic Equations. How does $2,000 sound? Okay, so apparently this teen angst thing doesn't stop when your teens are over. I mean, look at this whole whiny Generation X thing. Problem is, I can't figure out who's really a part of Generation X. I mean, they're not teens, but is it folks in their 30s or 20-somethings? Or just anyone who's ever worn a flannel shirt? I just don't know. But that doesn't stop me from asking you this. Who really was a member of Generation X? Yeah, that's right. I'm talking about the band here. Mick Jagger, Rod Stewart, Billy Idol, or David Lee Roth? Back in the day, Billy Idol was a member of the British punk rock group Generation X. Oh, so that's what's going on. <laughs> it seems like people are spending an awful lot of marketing dollars to try to get Billy Idol to buy their products. I'll tell you. Ten. Coming at you. Like, oh my god, democracy is so cool. One thousand bucks if you get it. One question coming right up. If teenage girls in Washington, D.C. spend their time hanging out at the mall, where should teenage boys go to pick them up? The Capitol, Arlington National Cemetery, the Pentagon, or the Georgetown Library? This Pentagon is so dull. Hey, is that Billy Idol? Oh, it's just Secretary of Defense William S. Cohen in a platinum wig. You want to see what the smart money says? The mall in Washington, D.C. is that big park. You know, where they got the Capitol Building and the Washington Monument, the Vietnam Memorial, and the Lincoln Memorial. They're all right there. Oh, my God. This mall sucks. There aren't any gaps, and it's filled with statues of guys who are so not attractive. All right, sit up straight. It's time for a coinky dink. All right, here's how we play this little game. I'm going to give you a set of pairs that are somehow related, and there's going to be a series of items whipping by that may or may not connect the two. Buzz in on the item that you think correctly joins the pair. There's $1,000 in it for you if you're right, but just don't be slapping that buzzer all willy-nilly. You lose $1,000 every time you're wrong. At the end, I'm going to give you a bonus question for some bonus cash. Let's just say you should pay close attention to all the correct answers. Your coinkity is called ever see a hormone okay hold on to something because we're doing it 
six pocket billiards and office betting group where these items intersect fortune teller sleeves and lifting light bags Formations and play face equals the hot corner. My blanks with Andre and Beef is one for blank. Sitcom full blank and blank of blues. Tony and Tina's blank and Liz Taylor's had lots of them. Jesus is blank, and the Beatles say it's theirs too. Okay, shifting gears into bonus. What do all of the correct answers have in common? Are they all parties? Oh yeah, rack it up. Oh yeah, let's partay. Very respectable. Add that bonus and you're in good shape. Well, what do you know, player one? You got the bonus as well. Maybe you should call all your friends and tell them. When the game is over, let's get on with it. Next, the Oxecutioner's song. $3,000 for this one. Hope you're hungry. It's question time. If Oxy-10 contained oxytocin, what would it most likely do? Start your pimples on fire, make your pimples extremely fertile, sterilize your pimples, or induce labor in your pimples. Oh man, isn't that just the way? A day before the prom and I've got a baby in the middle of my forehead. Ow! Oxytocin is the hormone that induces labor. Ten times faster than Stridex. <laughs> Thirteen. Here's a little something I call, Girl, you'll be a woman sooner than you expected. I'm gonna give away 3,000 bucks this time. Ready? Here's the question. If a girl has an embarrassing mensuration episode in class, what did she most likely do? Recited the wrong speech in history class, used the wrong T-square in woodshop, conjugated the wrong verb in Latin class, or dissected the wrong frog in biology lab. not why you got this answer wrong. Ask instead whether you'll ever get one right again. Here's the one you didn't pick. <laughs> Mensuration is the act of measuring, so she's probably using something like a T-square. She really ought to be more careful or she's going to wind up with that not-so-freshly-sanded feeling. <laughs> the category is... Like, I, like, hate when people are, like like that. You get it right, I'm giving you $1,000. Here's the question. Which of the following is the only sentence in which the word like is used correctly? You like stupid, I totally like hate you, be like Mike, or like, I don't know. Be like Mike is the only one of these four sentences in which the word like is used correctly. And like, if you don't like, like it, then you can like totally like, I don't know, like, not like it, like... You've almost made it to the credits, but first, the attack. When you see two words that match, hit your buzzer. If you're right, you get 2,000 bucks. If you're wrong, you're losing 2,000. Oh, and one more thing to remember. Remember the clue. The two words that match have to fit this clue. Only this movie understands me. Have fun. I'll be at the concession counter.
can it be to win against yourself? Find some competition and then you'll see. You don't know Jack! Last job, and there is an empty space on my scoreboard Say just for you. Enter your name, please. Your chance for entering your name is running out. I will enter one if you do not. You leave me no choice, idiot. You will have to inform hey, me if you would who like likes to play ice again. Cream? I do! Well, that's right, Bobby. And who likes ponies? I do, I do, I do! You betcha, Susie. And what about roller coasters? I do, I do! You got it, Tommy. And how about pornography? That's my favorite! Right on, Grandpa. I think we all know where we're going. Oh, awesome. Excellent! Pornography! You really want fun for the whole family? Then come on down to Uncle Jack's amusement park, betting zoo, ice cream parlor, rifle range, and porn emporium. We know what families like. Are you tired of Italian waiters always pushing the veal? I'll take the spaghetti. You should have tried the veal, Pazar! Spaghetti. Veal! Spaghetti! Veal! Well, worry no longer. Thanks to the new book, 1001 Excuses Not to Order the Veal. This handy restaurant companion lists over a thousand excuses to use when you don't want to order veal. Just listen. I can't eat veal because I'm from Scandinavia. I'd order the veal, but it causes my limbs to fall off. Or come dressed as a calf and try the excuse. How dare you? I'm not a cannibal. So order 1001 excuses not to order the veal and have a pleasant veal-free meal the next time you dine out. Brains. Brains. He's America's number Brains. one zombie recording Brains. artist. He's inspired millions with his words and his voice. And now, available for the first time on Compact Disc, you can get all of Zombie Lou's greatest hits, including the heartfelt, My Brain Done Left Me. Rainy Day Romance. And the unforgettable classic, Rain for the Holidays. You and your loved one will want to listen to this CD again and again as Zombie Lou sings his way into your hearts. Copies are limited, so order now. Just send $15.95 to the gravestone underneath the old oak tree, St. Peter's Cemetery, New York, New York. Hi, I'm Patrick L. Bender, children's attorney at law. Do the other kids hate you? Do they pick you last in gym? Do they call you fatty, fatty, hamburger patty? Let's be honest, kids can be cruel. But thanks to new legal loopholes, you don't have to take it anymore. Just listen to one of my clients. Yeah, do you want to trade your bologna for my tuna? So I said are good. I'll help you stand up for your rights with teachers, too. Mrs. Green was always calling on me in class, and I took her to court, and she was crying, and now she doesn't come to school anymore. Call me, Patrick L. Bender, at 555-KIDS for a free estimate. That's 555-K-I-D-S. Remember, even though you can't spell litigious, you can still take the law into your own grubby little hands. He was a general who would become a slave, a slave who would become a gladiator, a gladiator who would become a performance artist. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I would like to do some of uh, my art for you. I have things from inside that I would like uh, the rest of the world to sort of understand. Uh, wait, whoa, what? No, I, I, lions, no lions. Um, I was not anticipating lions in my piece. Prepare yourself for Gladiator, the artist. This time, his pain is on the inside. <laughs> Perfect.